Hi and welcome, I am so happy you're here today. My name is Nicola and hopefully by the end of this video we will have answered all of your burning, getting started questions. Not only that, we're gonna walk you step by step through your first couple of pages in your bullet journal. So, if this is your first time here, welcome! Super excited! And I would love for you to right now comment below what your biggest challenge is, what your biggest bullet journaling challenge is, and hopefully we can get the community to band together and answer some of your questions. Now, before we get started, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button below. And also, we have a free printable for you to download that you can print in A6 and, or A5 and essentially just put it straight into your bullet journal. It's got a whole bunch of cool things attached to it so that you can cross off every day towards the 30 days towards a better Bujo challenge. Now, before we get started, make yourself a cup of tea or a wine or a coffee, whatever you roll with, a water. We don't judge around these parts and make sure you get yourself comfortable. One of the other really important things is, is switch off all the tabs. Give yourself this moment in time to kind of be switched off and let's make the next couple of minutes really dedicated to you and your productivity. Let's consider it a gift in self-care, right? So I've grouped together some key issues into themes that I thought we could get started with. Some of the key things that newbies always tend to struggle with are some of the following. Getting started, consistency in making time, ideas, themes, and layouts, and where you get them from, creativity issues, how do you keep creative, organizing and productivity, and lettering, calligraphy, and handwriting. Those are some really important things that every newbie seems to question. Right, so you've got an interest in bullet journaling. You've gone online, you've searched in Pinterest, and you have started looking at Pinterest and Instagram and all of these things, and you keep seeing these amazing bullet journals. They're artistic, they're beautiful. How else would you expect not to feel other than overwhelmed? So let's strip it all the way back so that we can kind of start working on that feeling of overwhelmness. Does starting on a blank page really freak you out? Well, don't fret. Over 64% of the people that have signed up to our emails, usually I ask them a little question around, you know, what is your biggest challenge? And out of the 300 responses that I took, 64% said that they struggled about with getting started and the nervousness of opening up that first blank page. So, we're gonna get the ball rolling today. Woo! Okay, grab a pen and a piece of paper. Write down some of the things you think you might want to get or gain from using a bullet journal. Ask yourself questions like, do I take a lot of notes? 
Do I want to draw more? Do I want to be artistic or minimal? Do I want to track time or habits? What are some of the major things you want to add to your journey? Do you want to track moods and health and sleep? Or do you want to be more organized? Write everything that you need down on the piece of paper. This is going to create the fundamentals of what you're going to draw next. There are hundreds of notebooks on the market at the moment. And when you're looking for a notebook, it can be really tricky. So let's look at a couple of options for your notebooks to get you started. If you've already bought a notebook, that's fantastic. And you can probably skip through this section by clicking on the next part below. Or you can get more detail on our notebooks in our ultimate notebook review, also linked below. If you're nervous about going into a blank notebook, you can easily start with pre-printed planners. Quite often in notebooks, you're gonna find the same things, page numbers, an index to help you find those page numbers or things you've saved in the past, as well as lovely paper, usually 120 GSM. The thicker the paper, so the thicker the grams per square meter, usually the better the paper quality is. It means that you won't get bleed through or ghosting like at the top over here. Finally, you'll find some pages are perforated. This is to help you fix up mistakes or even keep notes in things you might want to migrate to journals in the future. Migration means you're moving to a new journal. All right, let's start with our beginning spreads. So for today's exercise, all we're gonna need is a notebook, a ruler, a pen, a pencil, some sticky notes, and a highlighter. That's essentially all we need to get started today. Eraser in case you want to erase any of the pencil mark. To help overcome that fear of that first page jitter, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our notebook and we're going to grab those sticky notes and we're kind of going to map out what we need in our notebook. We're going to start with the key and we'll come back to the key in a little while, but we're going to start with the key, then the future log, then where we would like to put our first month and then the weeks following that first month. It's pretty straightforward to kind of map out where you want to put things in. I've left even a blank page to make sure that I've got extra space for no. Okay, the first fundamental thing we're going to actually put pen to paper on is our bullet journal key. Now, you can go to the bulletjournal.com website and you can read up about what the key represents. But keeping it simple to start off with is really important. Because if you overwhelm yourself with a whole bunch of different characters representing different things, you're going to lose interest in using it. Now, personally, I don't use it and many other people do. I like to highlight my notes or even keep, you know, specific notes in specific areas. But some people use the key to track how they're trending with their to-do lists and things that they need to do. So on our to-do list here, we've got some really basic things. We've got items for tasks, we've got items for tasks completed, important tasks, and then finally, we've got some things for events, important to-do dates, and really key priorities that we want to take special note of. Now the second part that you want to make a note of is definitely your index. If you're numbering your pages, you can find where you've put things in the past. So say for example, you've got April on page number 32. You can write down in the front of your notebook that April is on page number 32. It's a really simple system to be able to find things you've written down already. Okay, on to our next thing. We've got one index page here just to continue on from the previous one because I don't know if I'll take up a whole page or if I'll take up two pages. So just to be on the safe side, I'm using an additional page. I could easily mark that page with a sticky note and come back to it later and use it for something else, but I'm going to commit right now to writing down my index page. All right, now I'm grabbing my pencil and we're gonna work on our future log. Our future log is essentially just a calendar up at the front of your notebook 
to show you what's coming up in the future. You obviously can't see into the future, but you're going to use as much as possible to kind of keep track of birthdays, if you're keeping track of special events or holidays, or things that might come up as the year goes through. Here I'm creating a really simple vertical future log spread. I've created a couple in my time and I personally like the vertical version the best. But here we've got a couple of extras for you to have a look at as well, as well as our finished um, vertical spread too. Here are a couple of those other styles I promised to show you. So here's the one we just did, the vertical one. Here's another style of that exact same vertical layout. Here's another vertical layout, but just with the numbers and dates down the side. And then we've got some that are horizontal. All right, let's get started with our monthly spread. Here we're just starting with a simple November over the top, and we're going to mark one down to 30 down the side with the days of the week. We're going to put a box around it and then we're going to highlight which days are Saturdays and Sundays. Keeping it really simple. From there, we're going to add a things to do, a priorities and a top three list of things that may happen during the month. Here's a similar style to the one we just did, this time with a little calendar up in the top right hand corner. Here are a couple more simple styles you might like to try. You might want to press pause here and have a look at some of these weekly spreads. I've kept them really simple so that you can mimic these in your own notebook. They're really easy to do and really easy to try and I would love to see how you've done them over at The Art of Bujo. Holy heck! Go you! Congratulations! I wonder if I can do that as an animation. Congratulations, you've set up your own first monthly spread. Isn't that amazing? And it was so simple and it was easy and you did it on your own. And you know what? Just because I gave you some hints and tips doesn't mean that you haven't done this on your own. You're there, you're drawing it. You're doing it by yourself. All right, now that we've gotten past the getting started stuff, let's delve into some other issues that you might be having. My bujo isn't pretty enough. Let's say you've started already and you're just like, my bujo isn't as pretty as everyone else. I don't feel creative enough to start. I don't know where to find inspiration. All right, this boils down to a simple issue of comparison. And there is a famous quote that says, comparison is the thief of joy, which it is because you start comparing yourself over and over and over again, and that is awful. And because you're starting out, don't expect that you're going to be amazing right off the bat. As one of the suggestions I always make to people starting out is, what do you want to do to be more creative? Is it add a simple box, and we'll show you now below, is it adding a simple box to your weekly spread to start adding doodles or lettering practice? So here's a couple of examples of how we're going to do that. All right, in the weekly spread we finished off with in our monthly, there's some space on the next page, and I'm just gonna add a, another block next to my current weekly days, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it doodles and I am going to start to learn how to doodle every single day as part of my daily routine. If I'm writing down notes or if I'm writing down meeting appointments, I am also doodling.
I want you to remember one key thing here. Having a creative journal is not about how you make it look like someone else's. It's about combining your level of creativity and your inspiration with productivity to help you have a more organized and happy life. It's really simple. So don't feel overwhelmed, strip it back. What may work for someone may not work for you and what works for you, again, may not work for someone else. Let me be the first to say, Regardless of how your notebook looks right now, it is gorgeous. And you did that. Yes, you did. You're amazing. Go you. You're a unicorn of amazing journaling magic. Kidding. Kidding. Even if it looks like rubbish, it's still your first try, right? Acknowledge that. You didn't learn to walk overnight. You didn't learn how to ride a bicycle overnight. And it took a lot of scraped knees and getting up and trying again before you actually got it right. So... Who am I? Why are you listening to me? Why is it important to listen to me? Listen to me immediately. I'm Nicola. I'm a mom first. I'm a passionate creative second. And I actually have a day job. I'm a professional third. I've been journaling since I was a kid. And right from the start of the Dear Diary days, all the way through to the more reflective focus and practice of encompassing productivity and goal setting. I have always had a hunger for learning. And if Instagram was around when I was studying, I would have been leading the pack in hashtag studygram. I have three degrees. I am ranging them from science all the way through to business and most recently creativity, which was a totally different scope of stuff that I'm used to. As part of the diploma, I looked into the enticement of being creative through journaling and how it made people more productive. There is a lot of science to back it. And I then focused my attention onto my blog. And that's become a hub for the largest collection of journal ideas. You know what, should I say it? Brazen enough to say it. Probably in the world. We've collected everything from A to Z. I think the only thing actually we don't have at the moment is zebras and you would probably be able to find zebras in the animals section. Um, <laughs> I realized that creative journaling and productivity didn't come naturally to everyone. So I set up a safe space where you could find ideas and themes and a creative outlet without impacting your productivity and maybe even improving it. Just a little if that. So hi, welcome and I hope you stick around. Hit the subscribe button below if you want to join us on our socials as well. I hang out the most on Instagram. You can find us at The Art of Bujo and at My Inner Creative. The Art of Bujo, we feature bullet journaling accounts. And it doesn't matter if you're a newbie or a starter, all the way through to the more experienced, the more creative, we share everybody because we believe in a community of building everyone up because you rise by lifting others, right? So over the next couple of days, I'm gonna send you through another video covering similar topics to this, but we're gonna cover some of the other questions because today we're really just focused on getting started, a really small section of all those issues. So the next couple of videos we're gonna send out is how do I make time to do this? How do I combine work and life? How do I manage my to-do lists? Where can I get more inspiration from? And how do I come up with new ideas? All of these will be covered. And we're going to kind of go through FAQ in the next video. And most importantly, download that freebie I sent you. It's the 30 days to a better bujo and it's a great way to get started. It's free, come on, who doesn't like free? It's a great way to get started. You can cross off the days that you're trying new things and it helps develop your skills over time rather than just going straight into it and straight into this full on scary thing through 30 simple steps. One a day for a month is how you make a new habit, right? I think 21 days to a new habit. So let's get started together and hopefully we can create an amazing community together too, supporting each other. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Please hit the subscribe button down below. And if you'd like to visit us elsewhere, we are all over Instagram. Come and visit us. We're also on Pinterest, Facebook, and you can hit us up on email as well. Look forward to seeing you next time.